if you make physics tests at one point in the past you made a physics test that was impossible and I did that because I've been teaching physics and I've been making physics tests and I want to show you the impossible problem that I made why it's impossible and then a better problem and I'm going to solve both of them um, so you live and you learn right one thing just my little new note I write out the test no matter how busy I am no matter whether I've used a question before or not I'm going to create a key I'm going to I'm going to solve the problem and and I give it to the students afterwards so they can see. But that way I make sure that I don't make an impossible problem. Okay, so here's my impossible problem. I had a 200 gram mass uh, hanging from a string. And the string passed through uh, a hole in it like this, right? And so it's a single string and it went through. It's horizontal right there and then it's at a, a 30 degree angle up there. Let's just pretend like we're solving the problem like a student, okay? I want to find the tension of the string. Well, let's start off with a free body diagram. This is the way you should do it. So here's my free body diagram. I have my point. I have the gravitational force, mg. I have the tension right there, t. And then I have another tension right there, t. Now, I, I, those are different tensions because they're in different directions. But the thing about a string, if it's a single string and there's no friction in the contact point, then the magnitude of the tension should be the same. That's one of the things we teach in physics is that if it's a massless physics string, the tension is the same. Now I'm going to pick this as my x-axis, that is my y-axis, and that's the angle theta. Uh, if it's at rest, I know the net force in the x direction is zero, the net force in the y direction is zero. Well, let's just write that out. Okay, so in the x direction, I have this component of tension in the x direction and that tension in the y direction. You can see where the problem is already. So I have t cosine theta minus t equals zero. Now let's just, can I just solve for t? I know theta. Well, t cosine theta equals t. I can add that to both sides. I can divide both sides by t and I get cosine theta equals 1, or theta is equal to 0 degrees, which is not true. I already said it was 30. Okay. Now if we go over to the y direction, I have <coughs> t sine theta minus mg equals 0, so t equals mg over sine theta, but I mean what's theta? What am I going to put in for theta? Am I going to put theta 0? <clears throat> then I get zero, that's bad. Or I'm going to put it up there and then I'm going to get a value for t that doesn't agree with uh, the value over there. So it's an impossible problem. Now let me go ahead and show you in real life how it doesn't work. Okay. I have here two four scales. I'm going to turn on that one. You probably won't be able to read them, but I'll read them for you. I'm going to turn that one on, turn this one on. Okay, they're on. They're both reading zero or close to zero. Let's see, that one's actually 0 0.6. Okay, now I'm going to take my little mass and I'm going to uh, connect these two strings so I can measure the tension so you can see that's the same. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to try to do the same thing, right? I want to do it like this. And it actually works, but you know, normally if you try to make uh, what's sticking? Okay, so, so you see that it slides down there. Really the only way to get the tension to be the same is like this, right? So here I have 1.5, 1.7, so it's pretty close. I do have some, oh, it's, it's also touching the wall. Uh, these have to be completely lined up with the thing, so it's not perfect, but you get the idea. And so you see here that I have the angles are equal. And in, in fact, if I have the same string, the angles have to be equal. Let me show you how we can do that. We can show that the angles are equal. They don't have to be a particular value, but they have to be equal. Let's just assume that they're not equal. So here's my mass, m. And then I have uh, two strings. This is theta 1. That's t. This is theta 2. And that's t. So I'm going to go ahead and write my uh, net force in the x direction. I get t1 cosine theta1 minus t2, cos or I just call those t. Uh, t cosine theta2 equals 0. 
So right there you can see that uh, t cosine theta 1 equals t cosine theta 2. Uh, so cosine theta 1 is cosine theta 2 and so theta 1 is theta 2 for normal values of theta, right? Yeah, you can go around, uh, you can add, uh, what would that be? Pi, and you'd get the same thing, but obviously that's not going to work. And then if I go over here, so theta 1 is equal to theta 2. Now, if that's the case, then I can actually solve for the tension. So in the y direction, I have F net in the y direction. It's going to be T. So this is going to be T sine theta, T sine theta. So I get T sine theta plus T sine theta minus mg equals zero. And if I solve, the, I can add the two t's together. 2t sine theta equals mg. So t equals mg over 2 sine of theta. So you can have theta be whatever you want, right? I can have the, the strings at a very, I can have them both theta is 90 degrees. I can have that. I, I can have them both at zero though. Right? You can't have that because if that's zero, you'd have an infinite tension. So it has to be something greater than zero. Uh, but that's how you'd solve that problem. But they, the angles have to be the same. Now, here's the problem I should have put on the test. I should have put this one, and I actually did in a later test. I even drew it like this. T1, T2 theta. So, and now what's the angle, but what's the, the tension of the two things? That's what I should have done, and I did do. Okay, so now it's different strings, different strings. So let's draw a free body diagram and solve for the tension. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. I have mg, I have, let's call this t2 theta t1. So f net in the x direction it's going to be T2 cosine theta minus T1 equals 0. I don't know T1, I don't know T2. I do know theta. Now in the y direction, I get F net in the y direction is T2 sine theta minus mg equals 0. And it's again equal to 0 because it's at rest. Now I can solve for T2. So T2 sine of theta equals mg t2 equals mg over sine of theta. Let's just put in our numbers. I used 200 grams, so 0.2 kilograms, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, sine of 30. So let's plug that into my little calculator. It's calculator time. Um, 0.2 enter, 9.8 times, 30 sine divided by, I knew that, was, I knew that. So I get 3.92 newtons as T1 or T2. Now I can go over here and solve for T1. I'm going to solve this for T1. T1 is T2 cosine theta. So that's going to be 3.92 cosine of 30. So, three, so I just do 30 cosine times and I get 3.39. There you go. So that's a better problem. Now, let me just show you how that works because I have these sensors already on. Um, if I tie a loop, let me get over here. I tied a little loop there, right? So now I can indeed uh, have that at an angle. I can have that one horizontal and it works. It doesn't slide because there's a knot right there. Okay, and this says two point, well, I'm not at. If I want, I can get it to, what was T2? Let's see if I can get T2. T2 was 3.92. So I'm just going to move this to, there you go, 3.9. And this one says 2.88. Okay, so it's not the same, but it's close. And that's because this thing has mass too and it's pulling on that. It's got to wait there too. So there you go. That's a better physics problem. Still pretty straightforward, but for a test, you know, I don't like to have things super complicated for the algebraic courses. So there you go. Don't make bad test questions. I'll talk to you later.